I think it is very hard for someone to stand in the Presidio of San Francisco today and understand what the Presidio of San Francisco was like when it was founded in 1776. My job is to help people understand uh, what, it, what it might have been like 200 years ago in a very different time and place. The Presidio itself is actually our archaeological site. And then there are several archaeological areas within that archaeological site. We have about 30 of them, and they range in date from 1776, when the Presidio was founded, all the way up to 1890, and even later, if we consider them individually significant. So we have a, a quite wide range of archaeological resources, and we focus on them mainly because they tell us the stories that aren't in the historical record. The two active sites that we have right now are El Presidio, which is our colonial site, and then El Polin, which is a site that, that is quite closely related to it. El Polin was the first settlement of Europeans outside of either the Mission or the Presidio. So at this time in California, you either lived inside the fortification uh, as part of the military, or you lived inside the Mission as, as part of the church. The El Presidio project that's ongoing right now is to basically make way for a sidewalk. So before they do any kind of ground disturbing activity, we go in as archeologists and we take a look underground and we do what we call identification testing. And that just means we're gonna identify what's below the surface. In the course of excavation, we found a trash deposit that's associated with El Presidio and it had some quite interesting artifacts in it. And so we halted that uh, sidewalk project and actually were able to redesign the, the sidewalk so that it would skirt the archaeological site. One of the neater finds from our uh, limited excavations here was a, basically an obsidian uh, projectile point or an arrowhead as it's commonly called. Um, here you could see the uh, sort of the edge of this particular artifact has been worked down. This is a, a rim of a vessel. You could sort of see its curve there. Um, and then you can see on the inside of this particular vessel, they had this beautiful um, uh, uh, design here. Uh, push up to a bottle, and you can see it's a, a thick glass, which tells us it was something that was potentially bubbly. This is basically uh, sort of a, the historical version of a cigarette butt smoking and drinking 200 years ago in San Francisco. El Polin is a little bit different, uh, and that's because uh, we actually knew what was down at El Polin. We knew that we had a Spanish colonial feature that was intended to hold water for some reason. It's a nice uh, terracotta tile feature. We could have just buried it and left it in place, and saved it for the future. But we elected this year to go out and do the research because we wanted to be able to use that feature in the ongoing uh, landscape and interpretation down at El Polin. And we also want to have it exposed so people can come and, and look at it. People often wonder why do we excavate things and then just rebury them under the ground. And we do that because we are largely a preservation organization. And if we were hasty about it, and every time that we found something, we just went and excavated it, then there wouldn't be anything left for anyone to research. And we, most importantly, we wouldn't be actually preserving the resources. We would just be hogging them, if you will. Um, and archaeology is actually a very destructive process. The process of doing archaeology destroys that which we want to understand. And so we always like to save some bit of every archaeological site or whole archaeological sites for the future when we know more. I can imagine this place 250 years ago. I think I'm probably wrong in a lot of respects, but I think in, in some ways um, I can see it and I hope that I can help other people begin to start to appreciate it. Mm -hmm.